So, hi, uh, I am uh, Sebastian Rochette and I will talk about you about uh, transforming scatter analysis into documented, reproducible and shareable uh, workflow. This is um, a feedback from a, a conference that I, I, I did a few months ago, so I will explain what we did during this, uh, this uh, hackathon together to do that. So, yeah, I, I'm working uh, at uh, Think R. I am a data scientist and R expert and R trainer. And you can follow us uh, if you want, if you need, and everything is there. Also, what I didn't say is this presentation is already on my GitHub. So if you want to follow the PDF, you can, you can find them uh, on, my, uh, on my GitHub account. So this collaboration fest was about the air software. So I'm not sure that everybody knows air software, but it's a, science, a software for doing data science. And this was in Concarneau in France, in Brittany, this nice, uh, nice place. And it was uh, with uh, different researchers uh, in uh, ecology mainly. The aim of this collaboration fest was to speak about air. So we were all uh, here because of this uh, software. And we had uh, three days together. And the first part was to do some presentations about good practices with R, so how to do packages, and how to use uh, Git to work together, how to put all your packages and work inside a Docker container and to, to share it uh, in a reproducible way. And at the end, you could also put that and learn how to work with the, the Galaxy um, user interface, which is a graphical interface to, to share your, your research work in, uh, to, 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 to the planet, if you want. Um, so we had these uh, steps from the writing scripts uh, in the, in the reproducible way to the to sharing uh, this uh, uh, packet and to share it uh, into a, um, uh, a UI like uh, like uh, Docker and, and Galaxy. And what we learned around that it was um, about how to efficiently share your your work. So base principle were made for data. So we already spoke uh, this uh, a few hours ago by Matthäus about uh, the fair principles, which is findable, accessible, interpretable, and reusable. It's applied to uh, data sets. So findable, it means that you can find the, where the data is or a computer can find it. Accessible is to say, when you find the data, you know how you can access the data, this data. And if you have to put a password on it, it should be written somewhere. Um, interoperable, it means that um, you can um, use the data inside different workflows. So the, the, um, the format of the, the data can be used uh, in, uh, in other so in softwares or um, some, somewhere else. And reusable is more uh, linked to reproducible. It's, it's like you can use the data to combine with uh, other data set, but also you can reproduce the data because you know how the data was, was built before. And if you want to add some uh, new data to do a meta-analysis, for instance, you have the clues of uh, how to, to go on, on the field and to add some new data to this and to continue to work with this data. So these are the fair principles for sharing data. And I think that to share the code and to share the software that you have, uh, you have we, we can use the same ideas around, around fair uh, for that. So. I divided that in five categories, not only four, about uh, accessibility, so the same here, uh, reproducibility, documentation, readability, and communication. So I will explain uh, in the different uh, other slides um, what, is, what are these uh, five steps. But uh, we tried to, to apply that uh, inside our, um, our uh, group in the hackathon to, to, to go from this coding to, to share the work that you, you, you do. But for researchers who only work alone in their, uh, or with two people in their, um, in their research lab, they are only doing some coding. You have plenty of codes stored in your computer. And how do you share this plenty of codes mass to, to the community? And how can you do this uh, in, a, in a way that the other can use it again? 
So this is a, a big step. And for, for, for that, uh, I would recommend to not stay alone in front of this big step and try to, to go with some friends because uh, alone is, co is quite uh, difficult. So during this hackathon, we decided to work together on a common project. So one researcher was here um, with a project which is called Vigikiro. It's a, a project that uh, look at the distribution of uh, these um, uh, bats in, in France. So we have uh, some data about uh, the distribution I and mean, the observation of bats. We have some data about uh, environmental uh, distribution, uh, temperature, uh, whatever weather on, uh, in France. And uh, with this data, they do some uh, modeling to try to, to model the distribution uh, uh, in France. So they have a workflow about, uh, about this work that they wanted to, to share and continue to work on it. And uh, for that, they have a lot of uh, OR scripts. So of course, I said it was about OR. So if, yeah, this is about OR. So we decided to, to work uh, together um, with the different uh, developers who uh, were there to try to, to know how to share this kind of uh, work and uh, how to apply the good practices that we, that we presented uh, the, the day before. Going back to these five uh, steps um, about the accessibility, the work was already available on GitHub. So the researcher put all the scripts on GitHub. So you have here only a part of the R scripts that were available at the root of the, of the repository. And uh, the big part is hidden inside the folder that we wanted to hide because it was too much for, for us. But at least we had something to, to work on, and everybody could uh, clone the GitHub repository to have access to this uh, R script and to, to be able to work together on that, uh, on that project. So the first point was already, uh, already OK. The main part of, of this work, um, uh, I mean, the difficult part of this work was maybe the management of the project, which means that um, how to, to teach to people who never use this kind of, of tools and together, I mean, to work in collaboration, to, to go from this script to a, a, a well, uh, well uh, usable uh, piece of software. So first, we had to dissect the work. So maybe you don't see it, but here we, we, take, we took a, a whiteboard to wrote all the functions, all the different parts of the, of the project, and what this script does, what this script does, and what this one. Can we link them together? Is there something uh, that comes at first, that com something that comes uh, at the end? And what do we have between these different steps? So here we, we identified that between the different steps, we could have some input data and output data that can be used for the next, the next step. So um, the researcher had to, to, to show us all uh, his uh, script and, all, uh, and to, to, to be able to also give a, an image like, like this uh, about uh, uh, his work. And it, it seemed to be easy for him to do it. But at the end, when we asked him uh, how was it for him, he said, uh, I felt totally naked uh, to, to present all my call to some stranger, some people I don't know. I mean, I, it was easy for me to, to share the code on, on GitHub because you don't know if somebody will see it or if, if they see it is on at the other side of the planet, so you don't care. But here you had 10 people looking at you and saying, OK, tell me what you did and why do you put that in there? So it's it's really difficult part, but I think that um, the, the, the people who were there were uh, really um, uh, welcoming and, uh, and uh, friendly, uh, which is kind of a a particularity of the R community. It, it, the R community is, is made, uh, I mean, there are a lot of work that is made in the R community to, to be able to uh, welcome anybody, uh, whatever is your origin, whatever is your gender. There are, maybe you heard about uh, the R ladies that inspire the Pi ladies. It's uh, some groups that uh, help putting in front of the, of the, of the screen uh, people who are not usually seen like uh, white men with a beard. You know, you are not only white men doing some code, so there are other people. So the R community is very um, inclusive for that. And I think that this, uh, this uh, thing that we have in mind uh, uh, helped us also to, to be uh, friendly with, uh, with this uh, researcher and to, to share the work and to, to work to, together. 
So we separated the work into small pieces and we opened issues on the GitHub repository to say this part of the code does that and I would like you or somebody to, to work on it to make it uh, to make it uh, uh, nicer or to, to work on this part. We dispatched the different issues between one or, or two developers and, and uh, so that anyone could work on, uh, on uh, his little part because here the workflow was quite, uh, quite easy uh, as soon as we had some uh, data sets that were uh, available to, to do the different parts. It was quite easy to say, yeah, you can work on this small part because you have some input data and you have some output data and you know how to go from this point to the other point. So this, this section parts. And then of course you have to manage the rep repository and how you, to present how you collaborate on side, inside a, a Git repository, how you do, you, do you deal with the pull request and, and everything like this. But I took this part for, the, for this time. Um, so the, the recipe, I mean, for this uh, uh, work and how to, to share this work is first to carefully peel back the code. So we had to identify uh, inside the code uh, if there were some uh, user-specific pieces. I mean, if, if inside your code you say, yes, yeah, this data is on my computer at C dot dot, my document and settings and my name, nobody will be able to use it again. So you have to, to go inside it and to find all this part that could be uh, removed or at least be parameterized, put it on the top of your script saying, this part, you let the user define where is the data on, on his uh, own computer. And you can also cut the, the different big code into small pieces um, so that it's easier to, to, to maintain or to see the, the goal of the different, uh, the different parts. With the R software, everything is uh, about functions. So a function is you take something in input and you have one thing in, as output. So the parameterization is like the parameters of, uh, of the function. So uh, we had to put a different uh, script as uh, functions or a smaller uh, function. And we use what we call reprex, reproducible example. This is a word that we used to use in, in, uh, in R is you have one function, so you have to show a small data set that can enter it and show what is the output of that. And anyone uh, that, uh, that uh, uses this small data set and uses the same function should have the same output um, without having to have the big data set that you use for the entire analysis. And if you are comfortable enough, of course, you can add some uh, unit tests uh, uh, on this function, but uh, maybe it can be later if you just start to learn how to read a, a function. So the first part of the recipe, the second part is document generously. Uh, we already spoke about uh, notebooks. So in R, we have this uh, notebooks that we call vignettes. It's done with Markdown 2. Uh, it's like the Jupyter notebook, but for, for R, so R Markdown. And it, it allows to, to mix some uh, plain text documentation with some uh, R code that will be executed during the process of, of building, the, of building the, the, the package here. And, and um, so that it's also reproducible. If you sh give the same notebook and give to somebody else to compile this notebook, it should be self-contained and uh, anyone can uh, reproduce the different example on it. So in this notebook, you put some also reproducible examples, but because you did some reproducible examples for the functions, you can reuse them to show how this function works and why they work this way. And in R, as soon as you build a function, you have to document the function too. So say, what does this function, what are the parameters, and what do you put in this parameter? Uh, is it numeric, is it text, whatever? And uh, what are the dependencies needed to, to, to use this, uh, this function? So indeed, when we do that, uh, we transform the, the, the package of the lot of scripts in, into an R package because this structure of having vignettes, of having uh, documentation for function and putting the function in, in a specific uh, directory inside your, your big directory is called a package and this is uh, uh, forced by the R community to, to, to document completely this package. So from there, we had built a small package, and of course we had to 
uh, each of us continue to develop the different parts. After that, you have to add, you can add the right amount of readability. Um, for me, uh, R is, uh, is not a minified uh, language, so it's not like JavaScript. You can uh, put a lot of air inside, and when you put some air, you can breathe when you read your code. And you have to think about uh, future you in six months will totally have forgot what you put inside your code. And if you can read your code like you read a book, it's uh, easier to, to go back uh, inside. There are in the R community some, uh, some packages like uh, the, in the tidyverse who, who also uh, give some uh, functions that are readable and the code can be uh, read by anyone, even if you don't understand the, the R code, you can understand, I mean, if, even if you did never um, developed in R, you can understand the code because the, the names of uh, the function and the way you, you write it uh, is uh, readable by uh, anyone, like an English uh, text. Of course, you need to speak English. But. And so think about the uh, future you, and think about also about the other developers will, who will help you, because if you want to share to the community, of course, people will give you some feedbacks on it. And the last part is communicate abundantly about uh, your work. There are many different ways to, to communicate about it. You know, social media, I'm sure everybody of you have a smartphone or almost some. Uh, you can do some blog posts about, uh, about what you did. And indeed, at the end of this, uh, of this uh, hackathon, I, I wrote a blog post. This one is in French. But the blog post was to, was to present what I present here today, so what we did to, to, to go from these small scripts to a, a, a shared, shareable uh, package. And it was also a way for me to add um, a little more information for the developers because at the end of these days, they are let alone with their code, and then uh, nobody's here to help them anymore. So uh, at least I add some, uh, some clues inside this blog post to help them continue on uh, the, the, the work uh, alone. And you can also build a website. And uh, um, something that is interesting in the, with the R and the R package is this uh, package, this plugin, which is called Package Down. And with this package done, with one line of code, you can build a website from your uh, R package. So it uses all the, the different documentation parts you, you have put inside your package to show it as a web page. And if you uh, combine your GitHub with the CI, with the continuous integration, this, this uh, website is built each time you put a commit on Git. So this is a website that is built uh, from the repositories that we built. So we have the first page, which is the readme that you have in the GitHub repository. You have a second page, which is the references, which is the list of all functions that are available inside the, the package and with the documentation of the function, how to use them, with the examples inside. And you have uh, the articles. You have the article part, which is um, the part where you have the vignettes, so all the notebooks uh, uh, inside. So the, the feedback I have from, from this uh, experience is that for this kind of uh, researcher who, who only uh, worked alone uh, in the lab, um, the mentoring uh, of this project was a, a good start for them because they would never go alone in this, in, in this project. I mean. At first, when I presented what they could do with the script and going to the, to the package and to, to show the website, they were, OK, but where do I start? I will never do that alone. That's why we decided to, to choose one of, of their projects to say, OK, let's do it together and let's see how it works and how you could do it. Um, as a researcher who presents the work, you have to accept the exposure. I mean, uh, as I said, it's not uh, easy to, to present to, to, um, to, to people you don't know your work and what is really inside your code and to have to explain to people in front of them, yes, here I did this because I thought that this was interesting, but yes, you have another, another way of uh, doing it, so let's go. So you also need a welcoming community because you, don't, you cannot say, yeah, I do not code the same way that you code, so let's break everything that you did and I will record it my way, but then the, 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 the researcher will be alone in front of this script that he doesn't understand and cannot continue to maintain. So you also have to be, um, to be um, uh, welcoming, to, to, to accept uh, as the helpers that you can help, but help the way the other researcher understands. So 
uh, this is important to be in, in such a, a kind of a, a group. Um, so th at the end, the researcher will change his practices. Uh, this is for good because uh, as soon as you know the entire process and you did it together, um, you, can, you, can, um, you can apply this every time you do a, a new code. You say, okay, I have to think when I do my code that I will do it this way because the documentation is important and at the end I would like this website that is nice to share to everybody. So, so this is important. But the, the thing that was almost missing is the follow-up because I only wrote this small blog post and then uh, I just uh, <laughs> go back home and I continue to, to, to speak to, uh, with them by, by email, but it's not the same than being here and helping them on, on their own code. So maybe we can find some other way to, to collaborate. So transforming sc scatter analysis to a uh, shareable workflow is accessible to people with a little uh, help to start, but as soon as you know how it works, you can do it uh, alone and continue uh, as you wish. And I would recommend for uh, anyone, either it's for R uh, or any, any other uh, language, start with the documentation. Because you have the thing in mind, you know what this function or what this part will do, so write it, not keep it in your mind. And as soon as it's, 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 if it's written, you can say, oh yes, my function is written and I can share directly it because I already wrote the documentation. So, so it will be easier for you for, the, for your future. Thank you very much. And um, the following question is, you don't mention in your um, 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 guidelines uh, for reproducibility uh, test-driven uh, documentation, basically, or development. Yeah. So the first question about what is a reprex, uh, it's, it's a construction of reproducible example. Uh -huh. OK? Um, there is a package in R which is called reprex, which helps you to do some reproducible example. So the reproducible example is that, um, you have a data set and you do, I don't know, a model on it and you have some outputs. But the data set is very big and uh, you need to spend two hours to have the, the outputs. If you want to, somebody to help you to debug this function, you will not give the big data set. So the reproducible example is like the smallest example you can uh, prepare so that the people can reproduce the output from the small input and can reproduce also the, the errors and the warnings that you have on your function so that you can help them say, yeah, I can reproduce it in a few seconds, you give me this small part of code, and then I can help you to debug this. This is a reproducible example. Um, I didn't spoke uh, about uh, test-driven development. Um, I think test-driven de development is, um, can be problematic. It's, you have to be very careful about that because you can think, okay, um, before writing my function, I write what should look like the output. Uh, this, is in, this part is interesting, but if you put a lot of tests, you will, um, you will uh, write your function as you want the test uh, to be passed, but maybe not, uh, I mean, I'm not sure I can really explain it in, in a few words, but uh, it, it's quite uh, dangerous to do that. It's like, it's like uh, you go in, in, uh, at school and say, I would like my uh, students to be very uh, good at addition because they will be tested in addition. So you don't teach uh, multiplication and you don't teach division. But you spend a lot of time on additions. And in the end, yes, they have 100% of success. But what about the rest? Was it also important that you didn't think about that? So there's different development can be uh, creepy like this. Yeah. up front with a really complex test is first of all really hard I would say and not necessarily um, straightforward so um, I a little bit disagree with what you said and kind of agree that it's a good process to do it this way yeah so um, you think that you say that uh, the test driven development is uh, iterative process um, 
when I, I, I imagine test different development is like you write the tests you want to have and then you write the function to, to be able to, to success in this test. But the iterative process of course exists because you use the function and at some point you will have some new data sets and the function will not work. So the, the, the test you will, you will say okay this should work. So you write the test like I would like the outputs of this, uh, this process to work and then you add the new test in your code so that the next time you see this function, so you correct the code of course, and the next time you, 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 you use this function you make sure that it will work. So the test is also here to, to verify that when you change the versions of your code, when you modify different parts uh, in other places of your software, that the test still pass because you, 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 are, you verify that all the different kind of data you used continue to work. This is the iterative part, but for me it's not what I, I call test driven development, but maybe it's just a semantic okay, thing. Thank you. No. <laughs> okay, thank, thanks a lot. Thank you.